Yo, how y'all doing, man? I'm back, and I'm ready to react. If you are new, I go by Hancho Houdini. You can call me Houdini for short. It's nice to meet you. Hope your day is going good. Hope your day is going well. And yeah, can't tell by title, man. We here early with it, man. This same day, this dropped, what is this? First half dropped an hour ago, man. So it looked like they split the highlights up, I guess, first half and second half. But yeah, this the first half, man. You know what I'm saying? Iowa versus South Carolina, man. This game. Whew, this was one of them games, man. I watched the full game, you know what I'm saying? I had to after that UConn game was so good, and I ain't watched that live, so I had to watch this one live. I ain't going to lie. But, yeah, Iowa versus South Carolina, the two number one teams, man. This game was crazy. Let's get into it, man. Got a lot to break down, man. This is – whoo. I know I titled, like – I titled that LSU game the game of the year, and I, I got to take that back because <laughs> – the game after that was better, and then this game was even better. Like, it just kept getting better and better, man. But we hear early with it with the same day reaction. Mmm, Martin with the first bucket. Raven Johnson. Mmm. I'm going to save. I'm going to wait till like the second half of the video and then I'm going to start talking like more about the game because I don't want to spoil it for those who haven't seen it, you know. If this is y'all first time watching the game. Mm, that was good defense. I ain't going to lie. Mm, Clark. Mm, mm. I will say, Clark was on fire in this first quarter, man. I'm not going to lie. Cardoso, easy. I noticed throughout this um tournament that Iowa, they really struggle getting offensive rebounds. Man. They struggle getting rebounds in general, but mm, they give up a lot of offensive rebounds is what I meant to say. Not they struggle getting, but they give up a lot of offensive rebounds. Because that happened a lot with LSU. Mm, pow, pow for the three. Mm, okay. And make sure I'm not covering the scoreboard. Mm. See, yeah, she's just so tall, man. When she shot that, bro, I was like, I was looking away from the TV, and I hold on. This is all I saw. I just saw the ball in the air. I was like, yo, I thought she pulled that from half court because <laughs> I just seen the ball in the air. She she was on fire, bro. Like, man, I'm. In my head, I'm like, yeah, this is going to be another 40 point game like she did last year, man. That was a silly foul. I don't. It's tough that you got to guard her way out there, though. Like, like that's tough that you got to be this tight on her outside, way outside the three point line. That's tough. And I think she had another, what you call it, one early in the game, too. I don't think they showed that in this highlight. She had one, three free throws. Mm, couldn't get all three though. Kids with the midi. Mm. That was a good pass. It was a lot of blown layups from both teams in this game, man. Like clear, clear pass to the basket, blown layups. Yeah, I want to say something about Raven Johnson too, but I'm going to wait for the second half. Mm, that was good. Hey, Full Wiley was a spark plug. I'm not going to lie. Hey, Staley, like, Staley, like, she's a great coach. Like, her rotation is, like, just great because she put Full Wiley in at the right time when they needed her because she came in and got them going. It's crazy because the girls, they make their free throws so much compared to the men. Like, I've been seeing the men, they be missing so many free throws. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's, they was, they, it was tough. It was tough for Stokey, man. Tough, Stokey had a tough assignment this game. I'm not going to lie. She was giving everything she had, but it was just tough. <laughs> That's 6 7. Oh, Wiley. Mmm. Mmm. 
Fearbach will do the same. Fearbach dives inside and gets swapped. Dang, I didn't even realize that was her that was in that Fearbach. Dang. Tessa Johnson. Mm, Tessa Johnson. <laughs> hey, if you watch the game, you know. <laughs> you know. Mm, that was a good job. Clark trying to get open. She is. Will fire. Mm. Didn't have the ankle. Clark, the drive, the kick, and a foul here is going to go against Paul. Yeah, but this is pretty much what I've been saying like throughout this season. Like, I don't, I couldn't like South Carolina is just way more physical. And, and that's yeah, Cardoso on her too. South Carolina is really physical. It's like, tough to beat when they play physical like this. Okay, we got the second quarter. Iowa up seven. Here's Fagan, baited into that, can't hit, Clark the rebound. Last year in the semifinals to Iowa. Here's Johnson, Johnson's mm, midi. range is good. Yeah. South Carolina's shot choices were really smart. They was taking, they was taking smart, high quality shots, you know. And Johnson, she got, she started to get heated up. Mm. It looked like she took some steps, I'm not even gonna lie. You know, she, she might have got away with some steps. <laughs> she might have got away with some steps. Yeah, they wasn't they wasn't letting Clark get nothing easy down in that paint. Like she had to earn every point. She wasn't getting nothing easy down there. Cardoso gets fouled on the reach. The NCAA men's basketball can go to NCAA.com. Cardoso, she surprised that he was missing a lot of free throws this game. I was surprised by that. Mm. Yeah, that um that play Iowa ran right there, like those little, that extra pass to the paint right here was, they were killing LSU with it. They, it worked a little bit on UConn, but South Carolina, like, it was tough for them to get these on South Carolina. South Carolina wasn't giving up too much of those. They were rotating pretty good. Like, I don't know if the highest is going to show that, but South Carolina rotated really good and stopped a lot of those passes, forced a lot of turnovers. Yeah, they got another one, but, man. You see, they scoring, but the, <laughs> South Carolina getting closer and closer. And that was just a bad layup attempt right there. Johnson. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they was playing physical. Staley was really coaching because she was rotating girls that came in to um, chase Caitlin Clark around and be physical on her. And she had them well rested because <laughs> they had all the energy to chase her around. Mm. Yeah, they couldn't do nothing with Cardoso. Mm, that was crazy. If she would have made that, that is that that would have been so crazy if she would have made that. That's something else I noticed. Full Wiley, she does not finish with her left hand. I think I noticed that when I checked out her high school video. She doesn't finish with her left hand. She got to like really start finishing with her left hand because a lot of layups she took on her left side on her right hand that she missed. And she got to work on that left. Mm. Mm. See, the, them passes they get down there all bumps getting bumped every time it's physical down there <laughs> they playing physical down there man but that's been working for Iowa all season seem like and just like that the game was tied this was a great game man that was a good box out it was bad one down there. Stokey and Cardoso, they was down there battling, man. But what I wonder is if, like, the fatigue would play an issue for Iowa. Because Iowa, they be playing, they play a lot of minutes. And South Carolina, I think at the end of the game, they said Staley, no one averaged over 28 minutes for them. So, like, they'd be well rested. And that last game South Carolina played was a blowout. So, they got the rest anyways. And Iowa played like a nail biter. <laughs> So, and I think Kevin Carter done played 40 minutes the whole tournament, every game. Mm, pow, pow. Now, that was crazy right there. That was crazy. That was a crazy shot. But South Carolina's defense played so good because Kevin Carter, I think they said she had 18 in the first quarter, and they only held her to three points in the second quarter. So they, they really made some adjustments. Mm, just putting a body on her. She was like, she barely got time where she touched the ball. Like, they was denying her the ball. Like, look at that. That was just defense, defense, defense. 
she got three people on her in the paint. Like they wasn't giving her no easy baskets. Mm. Okay, like well, this video is gonna come to an end. Mm. Pow pow, she was on fire. And then this was this was like a momentum changer right here. Dang, this the stuff in the way, but <laughs> Kate Carter turned the ball over because she was taking her time coming up the court. And she turned the ball over right before the half and gave South Carolina a bigger lead. They would have just went to the half with a one point lead, but that turnover gave her momentum, gave him a three point lead. Now hold on, let's go to the second half now. Okay, that's the second half. Yeah, they were saying this was Ravens Johnson revenge game, but she kind of struggled this game. I'm not gonna lie, like she was struggling this game. South Carolina played really good basketball. Like credit goes all to their coach Staley because she really made the adjustments to contain Kaylin Clark. Because this first quarter. This first quarter, it looked that first quarter looked crazy. Like Caitlin Carter, like she was going for 40. They held it to three points in that second quarter, man. And majority of the reason was it wasn't even because she was missing. It was because they were den denying her the ball. Like she was going possessions, not even touching the ball. And I was just like, wow. Like, I'm looking at TV like, dang, y'all just give it to Caitlin, but they denying her the basketball, man. They was forcing the rest of the team to do something. And like I always was saying, watching these highlights, like they need two, they need two more threes out of Marshall. They need two more threes out of Martin, and they'll be good. And I'm not sure if they got that. I'm not gonna lie. Like look at that. She like she wouldn't get nothing easy. Nothing easy, man. And this is what I've been afraid of for Iowa the whole, like, ever since I've been reacting to them, they, I just felt like they weren't, they didn't have the physicalness. Like, they did show some of it against LSU, but, like, South Carolina, a different team. Like, they were forcing Caden Carter to take tough shots all game after that first. And Kitts, she was really playing, too. Like, I know they just called a charge of her, but she was playing, hey, she was playing a good game, too, man. Mm, Marshall. They needed that one. They needed that. I hope I'm not like blocking too much of the game because I, I noticed it's like zoomed in. Like, yeah, so hopefully I'm not blocking too much of the screen. Like, look at that. They wasn't giving her nothing easy. Like, like it's physical, but they keeping their hands up. They not like they were doing a little hand touching on the perimeter, but in the paint, hands is up. Like that's just well coached. And she was just like. Man, she had so many good looks, and she was just off, man. But she was another one of those players chasing Caitlin from full court. So <laughs> maybe she got fatigued. I don't know, but her shot was off. Like everything Caitlin Clark had to get was tough. Mm. And Watkins, she didn't. She got in foul trouble early on, so she didn't get the get that many minutes but when she was in she made a difference <laughs> Tessa Johnson like I forgot what game that was I reacted when she was hooping she caught that same fire again and I think I think they said she's a freshman that's crazy they got some good recruits man South Carolina team is young they they got they got this lineup for another few years that's gonna be tough mm. yeah and she just started she started missing a lot in the second half. And I wonder if it comes down to fatigue, though, because, like I said, she's been playing 40 minutes, like, the whole tournament. I don't think I've seen a game where she was on the bench. So I wonder if that came, like, that fatigue or her just getting tired. Because towards the end, like, she was just missing shots she don't miss. Martin was missing shots she don't miss. She was taking shots she don't normally take. It was just, mm. Mm, so it's like a 10 point game too. When they got to this point, I was scared. I'm like, yeah, South Carolina just gonna run away with this one. Mm. <laughs> she got going and it was just over. Like the momentum just shifted. 
See, that was working for Iowa, but they had to work hard for it because, like, they'll get it one possession, then the next possession they'll try it again, and they'll, like, either blow a layup or it'll get stolen or blocked. Like, it was tough. Mm, Clark was just, she was short on a lot of threes. That's what made me feel like she was just tired. Cause she tried, she tried to dive into the mid-range game too. Mm. Stokey, she had some, she had some tough misses at the basket too, like some open misses where she had a chance to make it. She had some tough misses. Dang. She just got it. Like, <laughs> she was the X factor for South Carolina for sure. Cause she got it going, like, and they could, they didn't have an answer for that. It's kind of like last year when um Iowa played LSU and what's her name Poe got it going for three. Like, it's kind of like that. Wait, was it Poe or was it? It was a, it was it was either Poe or that other girl. One of them girls got it going for three for LSU. That was like an X factor that won them that championship. That's kind of how this game went. See, like they just defense they everywhere. Like it's hard to get around them. It's hard to get past them. It's hard to pass the ball around them. See, when Martin started missing stuff like that, that's when I'm like, okay, they must either just be tired or something. Cause that's just, that's just the easiest look they probably done had that whole night. <laughs> that's as easy as a basket they can get. They couldn't do nothing about Cardoso. She was going to get out there getting rebounds. Iowa already struggles giving up offensive rebounds. So Cardoso being a 6-7, they were just going to, yeah. One thing I noticed about Cardoso though, she brings the ball down a lot. Like, like she has, she always like brings the ball down. So it's like, mm -hmm. I feel like she keep it up. She can score a lot more points if she don't bring the ball down as much. Cause she give them a chance to block it when it's down low. Cause Stokey had a couple of blocks on Cardoso, or tip, or tip the ball away from her. I don't know if they count it as a block. But yeah, it wasn't looking too good for Iowa around this time. Johnson, like she was struggling. I think they said she was like one for ten or something. She was really struggling. So it was a good thing Tessa Johnson got it going because she was able to. Whew, oh yeah, this right here, this little three piece, <laughs> a little piece they got where they just went back to back. I was like, uh oh, they might can make some noise. They might can make some noise. <laughs> Yeah, cause after I think it was Marshall made a three, I was like, yeah, South Carolina gonna call a timeout, but she didn't call a timeout. She let her team play through it. And they stayed composed and they took it to the basket, played their game and drew a foul. And was able to slow the game down at the free throw line. Like that's just Good coaching out of South Carolina because she, she another short shot. Like I feel like she was tired. That's just good coaching out of South Carolina, man. She was putting her trust in freshmen. Like that was crazy. Oh, I think they called a travel right there. See, like I said, they showed a lot of the highlights of that pass working, but a lot of times that, that was the outcome. They touching that pass every time. They was either touching it or they were covering and getting the block. But a few times, Iowa blew the wide open layup, though, too. So it was just, mm -hmm. just South Carolina defense just made it tough. Mm. Yeah, that right there kind of looked like a good box out. I don't, it was a couple of funny calls, I don't know, but. It wasn't it wasn't the, like the whistle wasn't too bad. After trailing by 14, tall, mid -range, yes. mm, they got it going, man. Off of a leg, Marshall able to save it, and Iowa still has possession. A falter gets pushed, banks it in. And it's not like Iowa didn't have their chances. Iowa had their chances. They had chances. And I think it goes back to that um game against UConn, that close game against UConn. It was the turnovers, and then. It was a just missed shots, you know. Iowa came up taking bad shots. So I think when it was like two minutes left, yeah, they called a travel right there. But when it was like two minutes left, they was they just came up just they went like three possessions just come up jacking shots, and I'm just like, dang, they didn't try to run the offense or nothing. 
Yeah, South Carolina missed a lot of free throws. Like, <laughs> if the game was like closer and they needed, and then Iowa needed them to miss free throws, it would have been different because they missed a lot of free throws. See, like right there, that's just mm, this defense. Cardosa, she she covers a lot of ground. That <laughs> six seven covers a lot of ground, man. Johnson, I was praying she makes something because she was just like she every shot she had was a good look. It wasn't like she was just shooting bad shots. Cardosa just down there hustling, getting every rebound. Like, look at that. Look, look who Cardosa is. She sets the screen, top of the key. She still finds her way right here. <laughs> like, she still finds her way in the paint right there. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. That's just, they just hustling and working. And this is the first. There is Slim Cardoso's involved. Watkins hits the second. See, when they start, when Iowa start doing this, I'm thinking they either just gave up or they tired. I don't know. She was just going up the court. I think a possession before that, she just came up the court and just pulled a, a deep three. Like, they didn't try to run no offense or nothing. And this was like, they just, they played a foul game, but they couldn't score. So, like, it wasn't, it was pointless at this point. So, like, you got to play the foul game if you score. They couldn't get they couldn't get the ball in the basket. But as far as South Carolina, man, they played a great game, man. I know they had some scares in the tournament, but that could have like ended a undefeated season. But they they moved on. That's why and that's why I was saying like it's good that they got those out the way early, so now they know where they. Where, where their mistakes were, and they can move on from that. And they did that. They, this is probably one of the like, best games I've seen out of South Carolina. Cause I know uh, they blow out a lot of teams, but they play really good. Like as a team, like, some of their players were struggling, but they, as a, in terms of teams and playing defense, they play really good. And you just got to credit all of that to the coach. Like, they just down to rotations and how they was switching from. What you call it? And they stopped. I was like bread and butter play, which was that extra, like that pick and roll and that pass to Stokey down low or the pass to Fulton down low. Like they was able to stop that. And I was looking at the box score, man. Okay. All right, let's see this box score, man. Got it. Let's see if we can do some breaking down. Stokey, she had 11 points, you know. She could have had a way better game. I ain't gonna lie. She, it was a couple layups she blew that she could have made. And it was just, you know, just tough. Like it was tough. It was tough to get a basket down there. I, I mean, South Carolina's defense was just great in the paint. They didn't give up nothing easy. A Folter had a really good game. You know, she was taking it to the basket. She made a three. And you know, Clark played 40 minutes, man. 30 points, 28 shots. wasn't the best shooting, but she was. You know, what I'm saying she, like, if you take away a couple of the shots, because a couple of shots she threw up towards the end were, were bad shots, so. Her shooting wouldn't be that bad, but she took some bad shots towards the end because she started off so strong, which was crazy. But I think it just came down to the fatigue and then how physical South Carolina played. Like she was getting bumped a lot going to the paint. She was getting bumped a lot trying to get the ball. Just a lot of content. That just that drains a lot of your energy. And she her playing 40 minutes, like that, that takes a lot of energy. It's hard to shoot and stay, like what you call it, stay not fatigued. I think that's the word. Marshall, six point. She gave him two threes. Like she did what she could do. She could have gave him more. Like she, I noticed she like hesitated on a lot of threes where it, like she could have took a shot. She hesitated a lot. So like I don't know what it was with that. I don't know if she was just not confident in shooting it or what. Cause she took, she did hesitate a lot. But she played really like physical too. Like she was playing good defense, full court defense. Like she got a steal. I think couple steals. Yeah, three steals. She was. She plays physical. I think when y'all said she liked the Patrick Beverly of the team, so that's y'all can say that. <laughs> I don't know if that's like a good thing or a bad thing though. Martin, she played really good, even though she missed some shots she should have made at the end. She's been playing really good this whole tournament, so it's kind of tough because a lot of this is they, this is a lot of like I think y'all said this is their last year, so it's kind of tough. And they don't like they didn't get no help from the bench. I think they would say yeah, Iowa's bench had zero. That's tough. They didn't get no help from the bench. It's a way different game from the game against UConn. And yeah, man, I think I think that's really that's like a big portion of what came down. So they didn't couldn't get no help off the bench at all. But they only played two people though. So yeah, they only played two people though. 
O'Grady, they couldn't really get her going. She was 0 for 2. Fearbach, they played her for only five minutes. But then you come down to the South Carolina game, coach. Just like I said, man. I think I said this the last game they played. How many people they had over 10 points? One, two, three, four, four people. That's almost five. That's almost a starting five over 10 points. Like, <laughs> it hard, it's hard to be the team that's doing that. And only one person, well, two people only played over 30 minutes, and that was Johnson. They had her chasing Caitlin Clark. Like, she was one for 11, but she was chasing Caitlin Clark full court. She was switching with, who else? She was switching with, was it, who else? It was another girl. Was it Bree Hall? Let's see. Yeah, she was switching with Bree Hall. She was switching with Bree Hall. So they, they had the task of chasing Caitlin Clark around the court, making it difficult for her to get the ball. Like, they was playing physical. Kid, she had a good game, 11 points, 10 rebounds, double-double. Like, they was crashing the glass, man. Look at the rebounds, 29 to 51. Offensive rebounds, 18 to 7. Like, I wish they had the second chance points because I'm pretty sure most of these offensive rebounds, they got a point. They, they scored off. They scored second chance points after these out of these offensive rebounds. Uh, okay. Raven Johnson, I said, yeah, she was struggling. Who else? Pow, pow, really good game, three threes. And that girl off the bench, Tessa Johnson, man. They said she's a freshman. Whew. She was giving them buckets, man. Three for six, seven for 11, 19 points. Hey. And it's crazy because full body, she really, like, they don't show that she scored a lot in the box score, but she really, like, started them. Like, that first quarter, she gave them that buzz because they were struggling. They were down, I think, like, 18 to, like, seven or something like that. They were down big. And full body scored two baskets, hit a three. She, like, got them going, really. So, yeah, it's just good coaching, really. It came down to good coaching, physicalness. And that's what I was saying throughout. Like, I think the first game I took out of Iowa, I said, I don't know if they're going to be physical enough to beat those teams when they got to that time. And that's what it came down to, man. But, yeah, it was still a good game. Like, in no way did Iowa play a bad game. They played a good game. It just wasn't enough. Like, it just wasn't enough. They played a good game. It just wasn't enough. Because, look, they had one, two, three – Four people, four people out of their starting five in double digits. So they didn't play a bad game at all. But like I said, South Carolina is a tough team to beat, man. And yeah, man, this is a long video. But so that was Iowa Hawkeyes versus South Carolina Gamecocks, man. Till then, Hunter Houdini, he's gone, man.